black hat gear. I decided to put a video together to show you the uh, visual response of how these stoves perform uh, in the wind. I'm not looking at boil time, I'm just showing you flame patterns. Uh, because flame patterns could tell you an awful lot. So, what we've done is we've taken a look at these stoves. I power them up to about a medium, medium high setting. Uh, because when the wind blows, you actually want the flow rate to be a little bit higher. Uh, the stoves that do have microregulators, I open them up full blast. And what we're doing is we're testing them at three different speeds, at zero miles an hour, four miles an hour, and eight miles an hour. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, four miles an hour is actually not very much wind. Even eight miles an hour is really a light breeze. Uh, but you can see the response of all these stoves at three different speeds. And then we'll talk a little bit about how they responded. You just looked at an awful lot of data, and the question is, what does this mean? Uh, what it comes down to is looking at stoves and whether they're going to be efficient or not, and particularly in the wind. Um, does efficiency matter to you? It may not. If you're uh, going out for the weekend, you know, if you're fair weather camping, uh, probably not a big deal. Uh, the smallest canister you can get is four ounces, and that has a quite a few number of burns with it. Uh, where it becomes an issue is if you're doing longer hikes, and particularly if you're doing longer hikes and there's uh, no resupply. And then you need to really count how many burns you can get inside a canister. Now, it seems, may seem like it's a lot of work, but the difference could be whether you need one or two canisters. And particularly if you need two canisters and you know you only need a little bit of it, because now what you're doing is you're adding eight ounces of weight, four ounces for the can, four ounces for the gas itself. When you look at efficiency, it's kind of pretty easy to see because with no wind, you can see the flames are symmetrical when they contact the pot. Now you know if you turn your stove up too high, the flames get wide and it spills over the edge of the pot. Now, when the wind picks up, what you see is the, the trailing edge tends to spill over the back side and the front can lift up off the front side and actually not even touch the pot. And that's when the efficiency drops. And so that's why some of these graphic images are a good idea or gives you a good sense of whether the pot's efficient or not. Let's talk about some of the observations that I've made. So one, it's no surprise the Soto Windmaster uh, would do very well. It's got a history, got plenty of reviews that uh, show that it does well. Um, now, the caveat to that is even though it does well, fuel consumption goes up. So without uh, calm conditions, uh, a Soto Windmaster will boil two cups of water in using maybe six, seven grams of fuel. Uh, an eight mile an hour wind, depending on what pot size you use, it will double, uh, 12, 14, 16 grams of fuel, but you will get a boil. 
The other thing that's surprising is that there were three stoves that really were non-functional of above about four miles an hour. The uh, BRS uh, 3000, the Fire Maple T, and the Fire Maple Hornet 2 uh, both suffered tremendously at four miles an hour. Now, all the other stoves, um, you could achieve a boil, but what happens at eight miles an hour is that the boil time to boil takes forever. It could be 20, 25, 30 minutes, and the fuel consumption goes way up. Instead of a normal seven grams of fuel to boil two cups, it'll jump up in the 25, 30 grams of fuel. You'll get a boil, but you'll burn through a tremendous amount of fuel. Let's talk a little bit about the things that caught us by surprise. Uh, probably the biggest surprise is the Fire Maple Hornet 2. And the reason being that this is a brand new stove uh, just put out by Fire Maple. Uh, elegant design, uh, great for big pots, but the spacing between the pot and the burner head is so far, uh, it, it's comical uh, that this is actually, that people would actually use this. Uh, I think this performs worse than the BRS 3000T in, in the wind. The second big surprise, E-Tech City, I don't, even, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Um, I bought the stove a while ago. I don't actually use it that often, but I threw it in the mix. And now the, the interesting thing about this is it has a very close burner to pot distance uh, and it actually performed pretty well in the wind. The other thing is I, I bought this a couple years ago, but right now you can buy them for about just a little over $10. So it's a little heavy, it's a little clunky, it's a little unorthodox and it's kind of an odd stove and I don't know if it has much history to it. But the, in general, the, rule, the reviews have said that this is about in the middle of the pack of the stoves um, and it's cheap, 10 bucks ish. Uh, so it's worth taking a look at. The final surprise is this is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Now, MSR is a reputable company and they've come out with some great stoves. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, the performance of this was, was, didn't meet par, didn't, uh, didn't do the company any favors. Um, very sensitive to the wind. So here are my final conclusions. Uh, a thing to be aware about is in calm conditions, all stoves work great. Not a problem at all. When the wind picks up, stoves are not created equal. Some are better than others, some are worse. Um, here's my list of, uh, uh, of stoves that I prefer. I think the Soto Windmaster is the top of the heap, separated by a large gap by the mainstream, and then they're the bottom three, uh, the BRS, the fire, both fire maple stoves, uh, I wouldn't recommend to buy. Uh, calm conditions are all going to be about the same, but when push comes to shove, there is a difference. Now, that being said, all stoves benefit from some kind of windscreen or something to block the wind. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Not as all, all is lost. I mean, you could use a BRS and you could use a sleeping pad to, sur sleeping pad to surround it, and you'll probably get pretty good results if you want to do that. So blocking the wind is going to be critical for all these canister top stoves. So come visit us at www.flatcaggear.com. Thank you.